Okay, this is the terminal velocity of cats um, inquiry. Um, we're going to be dropping uh, cats. Um, they look they look like like this. See the little cat. So um, these are the blue cats that we're going to be dropping, and uh, there's uh, these cats have you know they have a little tail. Proper method of dropping a cat is to hold it by the tail like this so that it doesn't spin around on you a lot. Okay, and we're going to be dropping them from various distances. If you look over here, we have this string here, and uh, we have, uh, there's a half, 50 centimeters, and then we have like one uh, meter, and then we go up to like one and a half meters, and we're going to go all the way up to six meters, and we're going to be dropping the cats through um, into this hole here. It has to be a perfect swish. That's a photo gate right there on the top, and then 10 centimeters below that is another photo gate. So we're going to be going through uh, two photo gates 10 centimeters apart. And um, so our computer is, uh, I've already put that into the computer, so it knows they're 10 centimeters apart. So it's going to measure the time it takes to go between the two photo gates 10 centimeters apart, and it calculates a, a velocity that it's going to be going through those two things, and it's going to display it on the screen. So what we're going to do is we're going to drop, um, we, have, um, we have some more cats. We have some, some red cats and some black cats. Uh, the black cats are the lightest cat, uh, the red cat are medium cats, and the blue cats are the heaviest cats. And I'm going to, um, we're going to drop every, um, like we're going to start with the blue, the blue cats, and we're going to drop them uh, twice at every single half meter increment, all the way up to uh, six meters. And uh, so we can get, a, you know, we can get an average between those, and we're going to be able to figure out what the velocities are um, falling from that particular um, height. So I'm gonna, just going to drop these cats here a little bit, and we'll get some uh, measurements, and then, um, and then basically that's how the whole experiment is going to work out. You'll be able to get your Google uh, spreadsheet, which will have all the data in it. You'll be able to download that and be able to follow the video on how we're going to figure out the math and kind of figure out some terminal velocity, um, terminal velocity things. So I'll drop these here a little bit, and we'll see what we get for these. All right, so we'll go here at half a meter, and we'll drop it there, and then it says that, and we'll do another half meter, and we got that. Should get something somewhat close. We'll come up to one meter, up to one meter. Okay, and then we'll do another one. Let's see, what was that? 4.33 something. And we get something somewhat close, and we'll come up to one and a half meters. Okay. Uh, 5.28 and okay, so uh, we'll, we'll keep doing that all the way up to six meters total height uh, with the heavy cats and then we'll uh, we'll do that all again with the, the red cats and all again with the black cats. Put them on the uh, spreadsheet and then we'll uh, we'll look at the uh, look at the spreadsheet after that. In this inquiry, we're also going to, again, look at um, the acceleration rates of falling objects, this time um, falling cats of uh, the same shape but uh, different, uh, different weights. And so in this experiment, we uh, dropped cats at half meter increments all the way up to six meters, and we measured what their impact velocity was um, when they hit the ground. So we have, um, we have uh, distance. We had distances. And uh, we had um, uh, final velocities that we uh, were going to graph. Now, what we want to do is we want to look at um, um, we want to look at the equation for a final velocity of an accelerating object. And if you remember what that equation is, it's it's v f squared equals v i squared plus two a d. And a in this case is um, the acceleration rate. It should be gravity. Now we drop in these cats at initial velocity of zero, so this whole term again would go away and we would get VF squared equals 2AD. Uh, and I'm going to rearrange this just a little bit. VF squared equals, and then I'm going to put A here, and I'm going to put the 2D on the back end right there. And the reason I'm going to do that is because I want to I want you to see what we're going to graph. On the y-axis. On the y-axis, we're going to graph vf squared. So we're going to square this whole column right here. We're going to make a new column, and we're going to square 
all of those final velocities. And we're going to put that on the y-axis. And then on the x-axis, we're going to put um, 2 times d. 2 times d. So we're going to make another column here and do 2 times d. And we'll uh, take 2 times all of those, and we'll get the 2d right there. That means then the slope of our line should be constant, should be, it should be a straight line, and the, um, the constant should be 9.81. That should be our slope. So if we have vf squared on the y, and we have uh, 2d on the x, we should get straight lines, and the slope should be, um, the slope should be gravity, 9.81 meters per second squared. And we're going to graph, or we're going to use just two points, and we're going to graph um, um, a non-air resistance cat. Like what would happen to a cat if it fell without any air resistance at all? We're going to be using this formula um, to figure that out. Um, and what we're going to do is uh, we're going to put in um, six meters. We'll put six meters into this because that's going to be the highest thing. So we can put zero meters in for there, and the final velocity would be zero. So we have zero comma zero as one point. So we have a VF squared, and we have D, okay? And then we're going to put in six, 6 meters in for our D, and uh, you'll take 6 times 9.81, which is basically 10, so 6 times around 10 is like 60 times 2 is like 120. So we're going to get for our VF squared like around 120. I think it's like 117 or something to be exact or something, but we'll look at that a little bit later. So I'm going to graph these two points, and I should get a straight line. But then what I'm going to do is I'm going to graph all three of the other cats. I'm going to graph VF squared on the Y, and I'm going to graph 2D on the X, and I'm going to graph all the other cats, and we're going to see what happens to those cats. Do they maintain a straight line? Are all three of those cats graphed right on top of this no air resistance line? Or do they start to fall away from the line depending on uh, the ratio of their surface area to their, to their weight? So we're going to end up graphing four graphs all on the same graph, a no air resistance uh, line, and then uh, the black cat, the blue cat, and the red cat. We're going to graph all four of those cats on the same graph and uh, try to explain what's happening. Okay, so if you uh, got the, uh, the terminal velocity of cats spreadsheet template, um, this has all of our data. We uh, dropped three different um, cats. Um, from half a meter increments all the way up to six meters. So, um, and, we, and we did it twice so that we got uh, velocities for each one so that we could kind of make sure that we had uh, good, good, clean drops. So this is the blue cat, um, the red cat, and the black cat. The black cat is the lightest cat. The red cat is the medium cat, and the blue cat is the heaviest cat. And so these are the velocities that we would have at each half meter increment. At six meters, you'll see the blue cat got up about this high. Um, the red cat didn't quite get as fast, and the black cat didn't actually quite get as fast as the red cat. And so um, what we want to do is we want to um, um, graph. Um, we want to get the average of these two columns, and then we want to get the square of these two columns. Remember if from the last video, we're going to do the velocity squared on the y, and we're going to do 2d on the x. So over here in this first column, I'm going to put 2d, and I'm just going to do double all the displacements. So I'm going to do equals uh, 2 times, and I'm going to grab that displacement, hit return. And then I can grab that, and I can copy that down. So that's going to be my x uh, values. okay? And then uh, the blue cat average, I'm going to do uh, equals... Um, I could just do average, probably average, and then I'm gonna um, I'm gonna click both of those like that. Close that up and put that down. Okay, and I'm, and before I even pull this down, I'm gonna actually go right here and do uh, equals, and I'm gonna grab that one and I'm gonna do a, a caret uh, two because I want to square that average. And I get that. So then I can grab both of these. Whoops. Grab both of these. Shift. And I can grab both of those and pull those both down. Okay. Um, it's hard to see them in here. You can make the column bigger if you want to, but we don't really need to do that. Okay. So I'm going to do that again for this one. The red average equals average. And I'll grab both of those. And then I'll do equals this. K. 
carrot two. And I'll grab both of those and drag those down. And so there's my red V squareds. And then I'll do it one more time. Equals average of both of those. And that didn't work. Um, K3 through L3. Average. I need to grab the right one. There we go. Okay, equals this, square it, grab both of those, and go down that way also. Okay, um, so I, I want to also align um, what is the velocities for no air resistance. So this last one here is no air resistance. What is the velocity squared? Well, if you remember, the velocity squared is 2 times A times D. So I'm going to do equals 2 times 9. 9.81 times, and then you come over here and you get your displacement. So the first uh, velocity would uh, velocity squared would be zero, of course, and we can go all the way down up to six meters. So at six meters is 117.72. In that last video, I said it was somewhere around 120, I think. So, so that's what it was exactly. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to graph um, this as our x. So I'm going to highlight this. And then uh, I hope this will work. I'm, I'm going to graph. I want to hold down the control or command key. I'm on a Mac, so it's command key. If you're on a Windows, it's going to be a control key. So I'm going to hold down the command key, and I'm going to grab the V squared blue column, uh, the red V squared column, the black V squared column, and the no air resistance column. And I'm going to insert a chart, and we're just going to hope that this works. Chart. Not bad. That's pretty good. I think I like it just the way it is. Um, technically, what we'd probably want to do is change these cats. Let's see. Uh, almost we don't. Um, so this green one right here, this is no air resistance. Notice that it's a straight line. Okay. And um, uh, let's see if I can do, let's see, customize a series. Um, the green, let's see, that's a blue cat, red cat. Uh, look, let's change that to, we can change the color. So that's nice. Black, good. And then the no air resistance, um, let's make that one be like yellow. Or is that going to show? Yeah, I don't know. Maybe the green was good. Let's just go back to green. Okay. So that's the no air resistance. All right. So if we go to the no air resistance, um, we come down to trend line. Um, and uh, let's see, we want to come down to uh, right here in the label, um, custom, uh, use equation. Uh, you'll see that the slope right there is 9.81. We know it is because that's how we actually made that line, right? So, so the slope is 9.81. So the slope of this is gravity. So the, so the slopes of these, now you'll notice all three of these cats, what they do, they all start tapering off of that, which means their acceleration rate is not staying constant. The acceleration rate would be the slope of this, this line at any one of these points. So if I take a point right here and I do a, a, a line tangent to that, that's the, that's the slope of that. That would be the acceleration rate. So the acceleration rate is actually getting less and less as this goes down. And you can imagine if we extrapolated this out far enough that like some of these uh, cats, these things would actually eventually plateau out and actually be horizontal. When they're horizontal, then that means the slope would be um, zero of that particular line, which means the acceleration rate would be zero, which means it would no longer be accelerating. It doesn't mean it stopped. It'd still be going. It'd be some high, uh, high velocity, but it would, it would not be accelerating anymore. We call that velocity a terminal velocity because it's the not because it's a velocity that would kill you i mean it could be but it's the velocity that is at the end the terminating velocity the velocity that it gets up to and doesn't go any faster than that and you'll notice that the blue cat which is the the heaviest cat actually is going to have it once it eventually plateaus out here it's going to have a much higher terminal velocity the black cat is already coming out pretty horizontal it's already reaching a terminal velocity even after six meters. It wouldn't have to probably fall very far, uh, much farther before it's actually a ping pong ball or, or a cat 
that is actually going at a constant velocity the rest of the way down. So this is where it gets confusing where people sometimes say, well, then I guess lighter objects fall, uh, fall slower. Well, um, kind of, yes, if there is air resistance. And all of these cats have the exact same surface area. So they all have the same air resistance. That's important. They all have the same upwards force. But the blue cat had a bigger downwards force. So really what it comes down to is the balance of the upwards force and the downwards force. As this thing goes faster and faster and faster, it gets more and more air resistance. Once that air resistance has built up to be equal to whatever the weight of the cat is, that will be terminal velocity. The forces are equal, therefore there will be no more acceleration. And so the cat will be going into terminal velocity. But that's going to happen way later for the blue cat than it is for the black cat. The black cat doesn't have to go very fast before enough air molecules build up in front of it to balance out the smaller weight of the cat. Now, the, now think about what if there was no air resistance? If there's no air resistance, there is no air molecules building up in front of any of these cats. And the only force is the one downwards, which is their weight. And if you divide that weight by their mass, you'll get 9.81 for all three cats. So there's no air resistance. They all are going to be along this green line. If there is air resistance, they're all going to start plateauing out kind of based on uh, um, a ratio kind of between their weight, their downward force, and their upward force of the uh, air resistance. So uh, you need that to graph. You can put it kind of on here somewhere, and you need to print that off, and you need to put that into your uh, lab manual, and then uh, try to answer the inquiry questions and try to explain what I just tried to explain to you there about do heavier things really fall faster or not, or is there just a lot of explanation you need to do to explain that?